Good afternoon, this is Ron Brown. It is August 12th, 2023. Uh, I've just returned from a, a week off and uh, trying to get back in the swing of things. I'm going to uh, do a series of videos on using uh, HESI. The webinar series is over, but I uh, plan to make uh, several short videos on uh, how you can get the most out of uh, the software, especially in combination with Thinkorswim. And uh, today I'm going to concentrate on the market. Like I said, I've been away for a week and uh, I really didn't pay any attention while I was gone. So I'm going to show you how I look at the market and uh, use the software. As always, I must show you the standard risk disclaimer. As everyone knows, uh, it's uh, very easy to lose money in the market. Uh, and uh, you really have to uh, control your risk and uh, know that uh, going in. So anyway, any stock uh, index or ETF mentioned in this presentation is not a recommendation to, to buy or sell all trading strategies or use at your own risk. Now I'm going to open HGSI just like I normally would and uh, wait for it to come up. I closed it uh, with the warehouse and a couple of uh, charts open so it's going to uh, retain that and uh, now I'm going to go down and uh, put a daily chart over here leave a weekly chart here. The first thing I'll do is uh, click on the designer and I want to go into my market analysis user groups. So I'm going to click on this folder and then right here and I'm going to transfer this to the warehouse view then on the warehouse view I want to make sure that I'm in my folder top-down process views for index and ETF analysis click on number one I'll minimize this and then down here at the uh, uh, bottom of the screen you can see that the uh, sort is on the percentage price change one day when I've sorted on raw combo and this shows me uh, what uh, happened uh, last week while I was gone. I can tell at a glance that uh, most of the uh, indexes were weak. There are a few that are positive on the one beginning of the week and the five day and uh, most of them are down though. But I'm going to start over here. Uh, a lot of these uh, indexes or indices don't have volume so this column is going to be white. I'm going to skip the uh, Wyckoff interpretations and just move over here. These columns are the days since the three cross the six, days down since the three cross the six, days since the volume point at control 1010 was positive or the days down. And if you look down this column here, you can see that every one of these indexes are negative or the three is below the six. And when they occurred, uh, this, uh, let's see, the, I'll just sort on this. Utilities average uh, 11 days ago crossed down to the downside. The NASDAQ 100 eight days ago, same for the NASDAQ composite, the Qs, and so on. So you can see this market has deteriorated, and it, it uh, did it uh, pretty much uh, well all together on these indexes. They're pr pretty close. So uh, th this column here will for the most part keep you on the correct side of the market. Either up or down. Now when the market was really rallying, uh, the uh, this column of course was populated and not this one. But on this chart that I have here, and this is uh, my 2C chart, and my black chart right, uh, let's see, it's right, right here. It shows when the 3 is above the 6, in this histogram right here. Now notice there's nothing in the volume column because uh, I, um, what do I have in here? I have the socks in here and it just doesn't uh, show volume. So let's go uh, take a look at the Qs. The NASDAQ 100 uh, ETF and you can see where this turned down right here and it says 7 so that would have been eight days ago. If I count back, that's eight days. And uh, the market lost its momentum there. You can see it did it back here also. Then it regained it for a few days. But then it turned down and it looks like all of the indexes uh, 
pretty much uh, turned down uh, even before I uh, went on vacation. This is not to say that you can't make money on the long side in this market. It's just more difficult uh, when everything is, uh, is going down. So I like to look at this view, see the status of the three versus the six on all of the indexes, and uh, then decide if uh, it's worth playing to the long side or if I should uh, be looking for a, a short side debit spreads. Now I can't get a lot accomplished in a, a short video, but I do want to show you uh, what I uh, look for using the NASDAQ composite. So I'm going to bring up the NASDAQ composite and uh, I'm going to make this tall and I'm going to go into my market charts and I'm going to look under the NASDAQ uh, internals used with NASDAQ. And I've already got NASDAQ selected. And I'll just start on top here. And uh, you can see that this has fallen off uh, uh, considerably. As I look at uh, the NASDAQ over the past five days, it's down 1.9%, uh, uh, down 2.3 since the beginning of the week. And uh, it's pretty much uh, broken all the uh, horizontal support lines. I don't have them on, on this chart, but I'm going to put them on. I'm going to make this full screen, and I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to put some trend lines on here. I'm going to use my alternate A key. And I'll just... Uh, I'm going to hold my shift key. I'm going to change this to red. Draw that out. That was a support area. Above the gap was a support area. You can see those have all been broken. And another support area down here. And then I'm going to use this trend line here and go from this low right here. Uh, what I'd like to do is draw a trend line from the lowest low to the lowest low before the highest high. So this would be the lowest low. This low here is the lowest low before the highest high. And then I can fan up from there using that same strategy. Okay, so the, I'm using this for the lowest low. Here's the lowest low before the highest high. And you can see that this, the NASDAQ right now is right at this longer, or this, this trend line right here. The longer trend line is clear down here. But this is a trend line which is based upon this low, this low, which is the lowest low before the highest high. I like to do this just to get a feel for where the market is. And in the short term, as we saw with the threes going down below the six and the support line is broken, the, uh, the trend is down. But uh, in the uh, short term, I'm going to click over here. And if you look over here, you can see th these are VPA trends. The medium's down, the short's down. The long term trend is still up, which would be approximately uh, the equivalent of, of this or the even longer term here. So it's in a short term correction. I can see where uh, support is uh, down here in this area. Uh, the, the market is, uh, is struggling right now. I'm going to bring this back up. Let's put a short term trend. Hold that above that high. Whoops. I need to click on that. Hold down the shift key and you'll get a horizontal line. So I know where resistance is. Uh, support has been broken multiple places. Long-term support is still intact. And uh, at least I know what the playing field looks like. Okay, now let's go, go on down here. This is the NASDAQ versus the S&P 500. When the Blue line's going up. The NASDAQ uh, comp is outperforming the S&P 500. 
when it's going down, it's underperforming. So tech stocks, or I should say the tech-heavy NASDAQ was outperforming me up to this point, and then it rolled over, tried to rally, and it's underperforming uh, the S&P uh, 500 right now. Now, I haven't looked down here at uh, uh, this information, but I will. I'm going to uh, go down to the next chart and uh, see if I can get a feel for the AD line, which is the bottom window. And you can see that the AD line has been going down. This is in uh, chart 1B. Uh, I can also see, let's zoom in here, alternate 1. Uh, you can see that the volume on Friday uh, was lighter than the prior two days, but these uh, magenta bars indicate that there was a, a pretty strong selling pressure because it was above average volume on these two candles up here. So uh, risk is high right now to the long side. On the advancers versus decliners, you can see that they were negative. If you use the alternate I key and then move down, make sure you're on the last day, it will tell you what the advancers versus decliners were. 1648 decliners, 1457 advancers. Uh, same for advancing volume, declining volume, new highs versus new lows. So there's just general weakness all around when an analyzing this uh, this index. I'm going to drop down. This is the McClellan oscillator, which is uh, if you click on edit the indicator and bring it up, it'll tell you what it is. It's the index breadth indicator computed from the difference of the 19 and the 30 day EMAs of the difference of advancing versus declining issues. So you can see that at this point right here, put the crosshair on, as the market was shooting up, so were the advancing issues versus declining issues based upon the EMAs, but as the market started rolling over, you can see there's a lower high here, and the uh, line was confirming the deterioration in the market. Okay, now this is the new high versus new low chart. I'm going to bring this down. These are support lines that are drawn in automatically uh, by the program. They differ from mine somewhat, but they're they're pretty close. And you can see that the fan is still up. Here's the 200, the 100, uh, the 50, and the 17. But the 17's turned down. Let's go down to the next chart. Uh, this is the advanced decline line. I have it in that other chart, but if you really want to see, get a close-up of it, this is uh, the uh, zero 03 chart. You can see what's happening within this index with the advancing issues versus uh, declining issues. And then I'm going to drop down here to uh, Ian's multiple indicator chart, and you can see that everything is pretty much turned red here except for the Bongo Weekly. So I'm not seeing much positive uh, with this index. But I do want to know how far we've fallen. So I'm going to drop down to chart number 9, down from the high. And if you look over here, you can see that uh, the index is down 5.5% from the 52-week high, which was in here. So you don't have to compute it. It's all right here for you in this chart. You can use this chart on anything. Uh, just, I'll just drop it here to the socks. And uh, you can see, get my crosshair off here, the socks is suffering a lot more, down 9.3%. Now, um, risk is high in this market. No question about it. Everything's deteriorating. Are we going to get a bounce? I don't know. But uh, if you're looking for long side trades, uh, the odds are, are not working in your favor. But as you also saw uh, when I was looking at uh, this, that's 
the advancing issues versus decline. I need to get back to my NASDAQ composite. The advancers and decliners uh, were, were pretty close right here. This, uh, So, you know, th there are opportunities on both sides of the market, and I'm going to get into that in different videos. I just want to show you uh, what I'm looking at after being gone a week uh, as far as uh, uh, what's going on with the markets. And uh, my quick read on this is looking at this column right here, the days down since the 3 crossed the 6. Volume point of control isn't uh, as effective here because a lot of these indexes don't have volume. So I'm going to end this video right here and uh, I'll get more into other aspects of analyzing uh, with uh, HGSI. You don't need to pay for newsletters, listen to other people. You can do it all yourself. And I'm going to try to point that out over the coming weeks and months. And uh, these videos uh, may not just be on weekends. Uh, if I feel like it, I'm going to do them during the week and just show you uh, how I use the program. Thanks for listening.